Hey, what's up you guys? Bloody Jacob here to give you my thoughts on the first episode of Netflix's The Punisher, starring John Bernthal as Frank Castle, continuing his role from Daredevil Season 2. And this just released on Netflix uh, last night, or uh, this morning, I guess I should say. Um, but the first episode is called 3AM, and they released it, at least uh, in the area I live, at 3AM. Stay up until over, you know, till past four in the morning just to watch the first episode as soon as I could. And let me just say again that I'm a big, big Punisher fan. He's one of my absolute favorite characters in not just comic books and in fiction in general. And in comic books, it's my favorite's always been uh, Batman, Hulk, Punisher, and then after that, I guess Spider Man and others. But I think my big two at this point are honestly probably Batman and the Punisher. And, uh,. I've loved the Punisher for years now. I have a shirt right here, and I have a couple more of them. Um, I have a big uh, Thomas Jane 2004 movie poster right over there. Um, I, I love Thomas Jane's version. Uh, you know, if I if I would have had a choice, I would have had Thomas Jane come back to continue the role in Daredevil on here. But uh, John Bernthal, he's a really, really one of the best actors out there. Um, I've loved Bernthal you know, since his work on The Walking Dead, of course. Uh, you know. Shane was a really, really great uh, part of the show. Um, so when Bernthal was announced as the Punisher, I was like, okay, it's not Thomas Jane, but this is the next uh, best thing. You know, this is uh, damn good casting. And he really, really knocked it out of the park in Daredevil Season 2. Especially with that courtyard scene in the fourth episode. Uh, I'll never forget that scene, man. He should have won an Emmy for that. And uh, Bernthal, he always just seems like such a humble and down-to-earth guy whenever you see videos of him. I, God, I'd kill to meet him. Um, you know, and I know how much respect he has for the character and you know what he means to different people and everything. Um, and now I know the show is delayed because of the, you know, what unfortunately happened in Vegas. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I see the Punisher in a positive light, though, personally. You know, I think he's, uh, you know, doing some good. <laughs> Um, and it's not like he uh, kills innocents or anything, but we don't need to talk about too much, talk about that too much right now. Um, and I know there's people that probably already watched the whole season. Um, I like to take my time with uh, shows. I don't like to you know, try and watch it all in one day. I like it to, I like to take my time to enjoy it so it's not gone right away. <laughs> um, and also just to you know let things settle and concentrate on uh, each bit of it that I can. And also I have a lot of other shows going on right now, but Punisher automatically goes to the top of the list. Um, and 3 a.m. I thought it was a pretty good start. Um, very, very little issues with it. Um, Bernthal again, he gives a very good, more subtle performance in this episode, but it makes sense um, for where we last seen the character. Um, he's uh, you know sort of off the grid. He's working on this construction site, just uh, taking out like all this rage and frustration on this uh, wall um, with his sledgehammer. And these corrupt you know pricks who are working with him and getting pissed at him because he's doing a you know, probably like ten times the work that they are, so they're losing like uh, you know things to do. You know, so losing money. And uh, there's this younger guy who works there who actually takes a liking to him. Um, you know, the other guys think he's retarded just because uh, you know he keeps uh, you know destroying walls and he doesn't say much. Um, but we know better than that. Um, but yeah, there's this younger guy, Donnie, who you know kind of takes an interest in him, and he gives you know Frank you know some of his uh, sandwich and everything. And uh, this comes into play later, and Donnie gets roped into what the, those pricks are up to, um, you know, trying to rob uh, this <laughs> this criminal group, this mob group, basically. And uh, Donnie he drops his uh, license, of course, or his ID or his wallet or something. Um, and so the guys feel like they have to kill him, um, to cover it up so they don't come after them. Luckily, though, Frank steps in and this happens, and he just, you know, destroys the guys with the sledgehammer, and he uh, manages to pull Donnie out before he, you know, is uh, messed up by the uh, concrete hole and everything. Um, so I thought all that was pretty good. Uh, like I said, Frank, or uh, John Bernthal, he gives a more subtle performance in this one, which made, again, made sense for the position the character is in, like I talked about. Um, but you can see he's snapping and sort of, you know, getting himself back into it at this point. Um... I thought the actor who played Donnie was pretty good. You know, he's uh, likable enough. I'm not sure if we're going to see him much, um, or again, really. Uh, you know, just because I don't think Frank's going to stay around there. You know, the construction site, that uh, construction site at this point. But I don't know. Um, I also like the guy playing. Uh, you know, who was holding like the uh, 
meetings, you know, with uh, you know veterans and different people who have been overseas and everything. Um, let me see if I can. Uh, let's see. Um. Yeah, sorry about this, guys. <laughs> Um, but the guy who was running the meeting, and you know, I sort of like uh, I liked him and Frank's scenes because you know it seems like they uh, they've had uh, some history together, and you know I enjoyed that because they were able to talk about some things that uh, you know Frank can't really go to many other people about or really anyone actually, um, and they're able to sort of uh, go you know back and forth and actually joke with each other a little bit. Which is nice, you know, which is something you're never really going to see Frank do. So it's just good to see him, you know, sort of smile and, you know, chuckle a little or something. Um, now we have this, uh, these two agents, I think they're in the uh, FBI or CIA or something like that. Um, but Donnie, I think her name is. Um, yeah, let's see. Let me just check this out real quick. Jason R. Moore, um, Curtis Hull, um, he's the guy who was holding the meetings I was talking about. But yeah, he did a pretty good job so far. I think he's going to be a good sort of supporting character in the season. Um, yeah, Madani. You know, she's uh, Department of Homeland Security, actually. Um, and she has this uh, interest in someone who is, uh, you know, killed in this uh, sort of conspiracy wrap-up overseas. And, you know, it's probably going to tie into what happened with the Punisher and whatever uh, they had him get into over there that we've seen in the trailers. Um, you know, that part of it's okay. I think the uh, scenes with her and her partner are definitely the weakest parts of the episode. Um, of course, the Punisher, it's about the Punisher. And, you know, Bernthal killed in this one. I'm sure he's going to just, you know, show himself off even better as the season goes along. Um, but some of these Netflix shows do also have pretty strong, you know, supporting kind of characters. I mean, you have Foggy on Daredevil, who I think is, you know, really likable. Um, Karen, you know, you can kind of be mixed on her sometimes, but uh, Deborah, Na Deborah Ann Wall does a really nice job. Um, then even on Jessica Jones, you have Trish, you know, who I think is good. Um, you know, I can't say much about Iron Fist. <laughs> Um, and Luke Cage was okay, but, you know, there's been some pretty good supporting characters on the Netflix shows, and it, and for this, I think, uh, Madani and her, uh, partner, they're not that interesting ultimate, you know, um, I hope it's not, like, an overabundance of time that's devoted to them this season, but, you know, I can see where it's gonna tie in, and it's fine, it's not, like, a huge problem or anything, just, uh, not as interesting as, uh, Frank, of course, you know, shocker. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there's also a couple other pretty cool action sequences besides the sledgehammer thing that I talked about. Um, the episode opens with him, you know, tracking down the rest of that cartel that he was getting into. Um, we see him, uh, we see a little chase sequence and he just, uh, he uses a shotgun, you know, just casually, you know, holding his arm out the window and just, uh, taking the guys down in the car, uh, which is cool. And then he also makes this great, uh, sniper shot, you know, from, you know, blocks and blocks away. Uh, nails the guy around the head, which is cool. And I like the delay from when he actually fired it to when you see it, you know, nail the guy in the head, um, which is pretty realistic. Uh, and then at the end, we get uh, Micro, you know, contacting him. You know, Evan Moss, uh, Evan Moss's character, Evan Moss, uh, Bratchuk. Uh, I, uh, sorry, I, I'm terrible at pronouncing names, apparently. <laughs> um, but, you know, he, I think, should be a fun, you know, supporting character that will hopefully, you know, be like those others I talked about from the other shows. Um, but yeah, overall, I think this is a pretty good start. Um, the only critiques I have, like I said, are Madani and her partner. They're not really that interesting. I don't feel like they're as uh, invest investing worthy. I guess isn't really the way, right way to say it. But um, you know, we'll see how it goes, though. And I understand how it might tie into Frank's story. So again, it's okay. Um, and then. Uh, we also see flashbacks from uh, Frank's family, you know, scattered around, you know, from when they were supposedly murdered and just little bits he had with them when he got back home, you know, from overseas. Uh, you know, those are good as well, and I really want to see more of those for sure. Um, I like the actress, you know, playing his wife and everything. Um, so that should be even more effective as it goes along. But it was almost more effective in the trailer than it was in the first episode here because he had the Metallica thing. Um, 
But in this, you know, it's just kind of silent and you have some other weird music kind of play in the episode, which, you know, it's kind of mixed down. It had like a justified sort of vibe at times, um, which I'm not sure about. <laughs> Um, but, you know, which isn't a bad thing necessarily. Like I said, I think it'll only be more effective the more they, the more they show of it, the more potent it'll, potent it'll probably be. Um, but yeah, really good episode. Um, not sure how to score, score this one because, you know, it's built on a, you know, 13 episode long story. Um, but definitely a pretty good start. At least, I'd at least give it like a 9 out of 10 or more. Um, just because of how damn much I wanted the show for so long and John Bernthal Gunny is just great to watch. So yeah, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, like, subscribe. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.